Hi there, this is Serena from Cooking in Manhattan. Today we are going to be talking about Ossobuco, a wonderful Milanese tradition. Uh, it's a veal shank that gets braised in red wine and broth and then it becomes a perfect dish for Sunday supper in the winter. Let's take a look at the ingredients for Ossobuco. Today it's only two people, myself and the director of photography, the camera guy. So, so we are going to be using two veal shanks. As you can see, these are veal shanks that, ha that are bone in. And the importance of, ha of having the bone in the veal shanks is that it really gives a great flavor, most importantly because there is a little bit of bone marrow. So this is a very decadent dish. You cannot eat it every day, but when you do, I strongly encourage you to find some veal shanks that are kind of thick, so you have a lot of bone marrow to go with your ossobuco. Uh, we are going to season the veal shanks with salt and pepper, and then we are going to create a base for uh, the sauce in the pan with a mary or a sofritto as we call it in Italian. It's a mix of uh, carrot, celery and onion and then we have also a little bit of mushrooms. It's about half a cup of mushrooms um, and then we are going to use also um, one cup, approximately one cup of chicken broth and half a cup of a velvety red wine. Of course you can select whatever broth you have. If you have made for example beef broth you can use that to give it an additional uh, layer of flavor. And then we are going to serve uh, the ossobuco in a very traditional way. In Milan ossobuco is served with risotto and with a little bit of gremolata that is a mixture it's very similar to a persillade and it's a mixture of garlic parsley and uh, and lemon so let's get cooking I have my cast iron skillet over medium heat and now I'm going to pour down two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I selected vegetable oil because it gives no flavor whatsoever and so the flavor of the ossobuco really becomes predominant instead of having something a little bit distractive like olive oil. And now I am going to put in my, my veggies and uh, I am going to wait for them to brown completely and in the meantime I'll show you what we need to do to prepare the veal shanks. While the sofrito is happily browning in our cast iron skillet, I am going to start preparing the, the veal shanks. I, am going, I have kosher salt in here. I am going to sprinkle them with kosher salt and then a little bit of black pepper. For some reason black pepper really works very well with this rustic dish. So I am also going to switch them on the other side. Ooh, complicated. And uh, a little bit more. We really want all the sides of the veal shanks to be really flavored because there is a lot of meat to it. So you know, you want every inch of the veal shanks to be flavorful and uh, also, you know, it's, it's great to have the, the possibility to use kosher salt because it's so thin that it really penetrates very well in, um, um, in, the, in the meat. So, there we go. Almost done. And last side over here. First the pepper. This time we change it around a little bit and then the salt. I'm going to finish prepping the other one and then I'll show you when I put them in the, in the pot. While the sofrito is browning, I'm also going to add the mushrooms. And then next step will be to add, to make everything nice and brown and then to add the veal shanks. I'm going to season the sofrito and the mushrooms with a, just a pinch of salt and then they are almost done and so we will also add the veal shanks. The veggies have browned and now I am going to make a little bit of room in the pot, in the center of the pot. I'm going to leave this over here and I am going to put in the veal shanks bone down. So you see the bone is over here and I'm going to... Can you hear it? Can you hear the beautiful 
noise, the joyful noise of the of the veal shanks in the in the pan. So I'm going to brown the veal shanks on all their on, on all the sides and then I am turning on the oven at 375 degrees and I will finish, I will add the liquid, deglaze the pan and finally finish the cooking of the ossobuco in the oven. The ossobuco has been browning in the pan so now we can easily turn it around. You will notice that the ossobuco, the veal shanks are ready to be turned around when there is no resistance when you try to lift them from the pan. See, so they have been browning slightly and uh, we are going to finish browning all the sides and then add and then deglaze the, the pot. We are ready to deglaze the pan. So I am going to pour in ooh, about half a cup of wine and I'm also going to remove all the browning bits from the bottom of the pan. I will let this cook for a little while until the, the alcohol is completely evaporated and then add a little bit of chicken broth. Mm. Now that the pan has been deglazed, we can add a little bit of chicken broth and we are going to just stir a little bit the veal shanks around, stirring them so that everything is evenly spread out. You know, when you deglaze the pan, some areas are a little bit darker than the others and you know, there, there are the browning bits and everything else. And then I have already turned uh, the, the ossobuco on the chunkier part. The ossobuco usually, it's not one uh, rectangular piece. There is one area that is always a little bit chunkier. So I turned uh, the ossobuco on that area and now I'm going to cover it and put it in, uh, in the oven. Uh, it will be in the oven for approximately one hour and in the meantime I will show you how to make gremolada and I will also prepare a risotto to go with this. The ossobuco is ready when it's fork tender. So for two veal shanks it is about an hour at 375 degrees in the oven. And I served it in a very traditional Milanese way with some risotto with saffron at the bottom, then our ossobuco with a little bit of the wonderful sauce that goes with it. And then finally a little bit of gremolada. Gremolada is a mix of garlic, lemon zest and parsley. And now let's give it a try. The ossobuco is ready when it's fork tender, so here we go. Mmm, so good. Mm -hmm. This is going to be so tasty. You need to try it. I hope you enjoyed making ossobuco with me and I hope you will make it again for your family. And I will see you again on the next Cooking in Manhattan. But now, turn off the computer and get cooking. Ciao!